For certain kinds of websites like Reddit, which are very feed oriented, I really like having an RSS feed, but the problem is that a lot of really popular websites either one, don't have this functionality built into them anymore, even though they did in the past, or two, they still have the functionality, but for whatever reason, they don't show it to the user, which makes no sense to me. Just get rid of the functionality if you're not going to show it to anyone. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how to get an RSS feed for a lot of these popular websites. Now, I am making a couple of rules for myself. One, I don't want to have to pay anything. Two, I don't want to have to have a user account. And three, I don't want to have to use proprietary software. The only places where I'll make an exception for rules two and three is for where it's natively built into the platform. Because if the website has an API and you're willing to pay some money, you can even get an RSS feed for things like TikTok. But I'd much rather show you a free, as in monetarily free, and a FOSS solution when I actually can. Now, this list is going to be in ease of use, not in popularity. So the first one we have is Reddit. Now, I don't even go to the Reddit website anymore because the way the RSS feeds work for this website is honestly amazing. So you can turn basically every page into an RSS feed. So let's say we want to see something like an RSS feed for r slash Arch Linux. All we do is go to that subreddit, stick dot RSS on the end, and give it a second. Now we have an RSS feed for that entire subreddit. Or let's say that we want it to be on something besides the hot post. Let's say we want it to be on the new post. All we do is go to new, and basically we do the exact same thing. So we take off the slash at the end, we put dot RSS there, and now we have an RSS feed for the new post. But it doesn't just have to be for a subreddit either. Let's say we want to see an RSS feed for a specific post. Like let's say, I don't know, this one right here. All we do is go to the post, take the slash off the end, put dot RSS there, and now we have an RSS feed for that post. And this even works with user profiles. Just go to the user profile, take the slash off at the end, put dot RSS there, and there you go. Even pages where you have to log in to actually see it still work. Now, obviously, because you're not logged into the RSS feed, it's not actually going to work. So if we go to the, say my inbox here, and then I put dot RSS on the end, We'll get an RSS feed for the inbox, but it's going to say, hey, you actually need to sign up to see your inbox. But because Reddit makes it so easy to do, I don't know why you'd ever actually want to go to the Reddit website. The only slight issue this has is there isn't an obvious button on the page to actually turn it into an RSS feed. You have to go and actually stick RSS on there manually, which isn't that big of a deal, but it is a slight issue to keep in mind. Now, the next one we have is Peertube. So I'm going to be using Luke's Peertube instance just because it's the first one I can actually think of. So if we want to get an RSS feed for Peertube, basically all we do is we go click this little button up here and we can see we can get an RSS feed, we can get an Atom feed, or we can get a JSON feed. So we can actually get more than just RSS, but we're looking for RSS today. So go and click on that. And there you go. Now you have an RSS feed for this Peertube instance. It's a little bit more limited than Reddit, but honestly, it's as much as you'll ever actually need. So I don't think you'll ever actually want an RSS feed for the comments on a video. So the next one we have is for Mastodon and BitChute. Now I'm bundling these together just because they work in a very similar way. So on Mastodon, what we do is we go to a user profile. So let's say we go to my profile here. And what we do is when you're actually on the profile page, so not your feed page, it actually has to be a specific profile. What we do is just stick dot RSS on the end, and then we get an RSS feed for this profile. Now, the way the bit should works is very similar. So once again, we can go and make an RSS feed for a profile, or I guess in the case of BitChute, it would be a channel, but we don't go and stick .rss on the end. So all we have to do is go use the URL in this form right here. So www.bitshoot.com slash feeds slash RSS slash channel slash the friendly URL for that channel. So in my case, that's going to be Brody Robertson. So if we go over to my profile here, as we can see Brody Robertson here, you can't go and use the channel ID. Now, I don't know why the channel ID doesn't work. I honestly would have set it up to use that as the default instead of the friendly URL, but this is what you need to do. So if we go and run this, as we can see, this is an RSS feed for my channel. So let's say we wanted one for another channel like, I don't know, EEV blog, for example. So that would be EEV blog. And now we have the RSS feed for that channel. Now, like with Reddit, BitChute and Mastodon don't have an obvious button anywhere, but luckily both of them do have some frequently answered questions about getting an RSS feed and the developers of the site actually do tell you how to do it.
Next up, we have YouTube. So in the past, every single channel actually did have an RSS feed button on it, which would generate an RSS feed for it. But for whatever reason, they decided to remove the button, but keep the functionality around. So the way that we go and do this is we take the URL in this form right here. So www.youtube.com slash feeds slash videos dot XML question mark channel underscore ID and then whatever the ID of the channel is. So this has to actually be the channel ID, not the vanity URL. So let's go over to my channel. And as we can see, this is going to be the ID right here. So from U to A right here. Any single channel you go to is going to have something like this. Let's say we go to something like DistroTube and go to his channel page here. As we can see, this ID right here is going to be the ID for DistroTube's page. So let's go and take this right here instead and go and run this. Get rid of the channel ID here, put that in there. And as we're going to see, here is an RSS feed for DistroTube's channel. Now, a vanity URL looks a little bit different. So you know that this isn't a vanity URL because it's youtube.com slash channel slash a random string of characters. In the case of a vanity URL, it doesn't use slash channel. What it uses is slash C instead. So in DT's case, he has set his vanity URL to distrotube and that will link back to his channel. But this doesn't actually work for what we're trying to do. So if for whatever reason, every time you go to a channel, you're only seeing the vanity URL, there is another way we can get to the ID. So if we go into the page source and we search for this string right here, so channel ID, quotation mark content equals, this will take us down to the one place on the page where the ID is actually located. You can go and take this ID and then stick it into the RSS URL. So because YouTube can't serve you ads anywhere near as easily through an RSS feed, I expect this feature to eventually be removed. So when that does eventually happen, I would say your next best bet is to use a service called Invidious. Now Invidious is basically a third party front end for YouTube, which you can go and host yourself, or you can go and use any of the instances that are already running. So basically it looks a little something like this. Give it a second. Some of the servers are a little bit slow and that is why you may want to host it yourself. So let's go to my channel page here and let's say we want to get the RSS feed for this one. All we do is click the RSS button. It will take us to a page that has an RSS feed on it and there we go. Now next up is library. So people have wanted an RSS feed for library for quite a while but the main developers weren't working on it because someone's actually working on a third party tool to do it and this person is in talks with the library team so hopefully eventually it will be a part of the main service. So you can go and host this yourself if you want or you can go and use the hosted version by the main developer. So that is over on libraryfeed.melroy.org and then slash channel slash TV and whatever the channel name is going to be. So in this case, we have EEV blog, but let's say we wanted to go to my channel. That's going to be Brody Robertson. And as we can see, that's my RSS feed. Or we can go to say tech over T, uh, if I can spell it correctly, tech over E E A, and that should be tech over T right there. Now, the next one is the last of the easy ones. So this is for Twitter. So in the past, Twitter did have a native way to do RSS, but this was removed, I think, five or so years ago. And the reason why it was removed is probably the same reason why it was removed from YouTube, because it's much harder to serve ads if you have an RSS feed. So the way that we can go and get around this is by using a third party Twitter client called Nitter. Now, Nitter, I'm not going to go too much detail in. Basically, it just gets rid of the feed and you go directly to people's profiles. So we can go and get an RSS feed for my profile here by clicking the RSS button. And there we go. Now we have an RSS feed. And like with the NVIDIA and the library solution, this is free and open source. So you can go and host it yourself if you want to. Now, as for something like Facebook and Instagram, I couldn't go and find a dedicated tool for working with them. So it seems like the best solution is to use something called RSS-Bridge. Now, in this case, it might actually be better to use this rather than a dedicated tool. So this is a fairly popular project that tries to bring RSS feeds to as many websites as possible. So things like Bandcamp or Google search or Instagram, obviously open classrooms, Pinterest, if you're the two people who still use Pinterest, Twitter, Wikipedia, YouTube, and many, many more, which we can see in here. So if we scroll through this, as we can see, there is a ton of different websites that are supported. The one problem with this solution though, is I haven't found anyone who's hosting it publicly. So you're gonna have to go and host it yourself. There is a click and deploy solution on here. So if we go down a bit, we can see deploy on scaling on deploy on Heroku, but my suggestion is to go and use Linode. 
If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Right now, there does seem to be a bit of an issue with the Instagram RSS feed, probably because they've gone and modified their API. So if the development for this application ever stops, then you'll pretty much be stuck. Now, I do want to make a bit of an honorable mention, that is to news sites. So unlike social media sites, most news sites, not all of them, but most of them still have a fairly obvious way to get an RSS feed. So if you're someone like Anand Tech, you still have an RSS feed button on your homepage, but... If you don't have that, there's still, you know, a page that has RSS links on it, and you can usually get to it by searching it on something like DuckDuckGo, Google Start Page, anything like that. And it's still there, even though it may not be super obvious, it is still nice to have it natively on the site. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. If there's anything I happen to miss, then feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. And if I made enough mistakes, then I guess I'll just compile them into one big comment and go and pin that. But I think that I hit on most of the big websites. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andrew, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, Lee, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go and support my work, and links down below to my Patreon subscribers, our Libra pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.